Hello. Welcome to the POP online training module on installing POP tools, Scorpi, Scalaska and Cube. My name is Bernd Moore. I'm from Uli Supercomputing Center and I'm the, the lead of the development team of Scalaska and Cube. My team is also involved in the Scorpi uh, uh, development and maintenance. In this module, I will show you how to install the tools Scorpi, Scalaska, and Cube either on an HPC cluster, a Linux cluster, or on your Linux workstation or laptop. There's basically two ways of doing it. You can do it yourself by downloading the sources and then compile and install them, which I call simple manual installation. Or later, I'll also show you how to can, you can automate that by using HPC package managers like EasyBuild, Spec, and OpenHPC. Of course, you need access to a Linux workstation or laptop uh, in order to do the installation and you should have a basic understanding of Linux shell commands. The Linux system should have the usual development software installed uh, like uh, C, C++ and Fortran compilers. This can be uh, any sort like GNU compilers, Intel, IBM, PGI or any others an MPI library like OpenMPI, MPICH, Intel or other, or any other. And for our cube tool, we need a graphics library called Qt and it should be either uh, a newer uh, version 4 or a version 5 Qt. And then of course you need uh, installation tools like make, uh, uh, the usual shell, uh, POSIX shells and so on. As any other HPC uh, application and, and module, also our software is, uh, is based on other components. And in this diagram, I want to show the different uh, dependencies. So the three tools, Scorpi, Scalaska, and, uh, and Cube, uh, shown in dark green, are on one hand, uh, depending on uh, submodules, uh, which we uh, also provide, like Opari 2, which is the OpenMP instrumenter, the OpenTrace format version 2, which is the trace format, and the CubeWrite and CubeLib, which is uh, uh, tools and libraries for managing profiles. In the gray part, I show uh, the, the need for uh, the MPI library and the compiler or the, the Qt library, which you would normally install uh, through the system uh, package manager. If you want to also uh, record uh, hardware counters on your system, you need a different component called uh, Papi, uh, which you would have to download from the internet and also install. Okay. How would you do the installation? Uh, now it depends uh, uh, on two scenarios. Either you're using your Tesco or laptop or uh, your local HPC cluster, uh, basically in your organization, which where you have a good connection and you can easily use, then uh, you would basically follow the local scenario or, which is also very common, that you basically use your personal desktop or laptop to access a very remote HPC cluster. In the local scenario, you basically install all three tools in the order Cube, Scorpi, and Scalaska. If you have a remote scenario, you would install Cube on your uh, desktop or laptop, and then Scorpi and Scalaska on remote uh, cluster. The order is somehow important. Uh, so that uh, the different tools can reuse the subcomponents and you don't have to install the subcomponents uh, multiple times. Okay, how would you do it? So for Cube, yeah, you would go to the Scalaska.org website on the URL shown and you look uh, for the latest version of Cube bundle, which contains everything uh, necessary to compile the Cube GUI and all the libraries. Currently, that's this version 4.5. Once you downloaded it and put it in onto your system, you, you go there where you uh, uh, have downloaded it, you unpack uh, the package, which is done by the targ command as shown, and then once that is done, uh, you go into a subdirectory, which gets created by the unpacking. Um, and uh, yeah, inside that directory, you would have to call the configure command, 
which gets basically one option and the option tells you the prefix uh, where to install the, the tool. And so typically you do that in uh, some uh, space on your system for optional tools like opt local or user local. Uh, but of course, uh, it's also possible uh, to install things uh, like in a home directory if you, do, uh, you don't have root access to the system and so on. So uh, you can also specify here like uh, $home tools cube and then would install it in the subdirectory of your home directory. Once the configure is done, um, at the end you would uh, type make. That would start the compilation process. It probably takes a while when to compile all the files and link them together. Once this is done, at the end you just say make install and then with this does, takes all the compiled uh, programs and, and necessary files which is, are needed for the tools and compiles and, and puts it into the uh, directory you specified with prefix. So these are the commands uh, if you want to install it on a Linux uh, laptop or system. If you have uh, a Windows system or a Mac uh, system, the Skalaska website uh, also provides actually binary installers uh, where you can just, as usual with binary install, just download the package, uh, click on the installer and have uh, the stuff installed. Okay, um, you basically follow the same procedure for Scorpi. Scorpi. So you, again, you go to scorpi.org uh, scroll down on that web page to the download section and uh, download the SCORP module. The latest version currently is 6.0. And then you do the same thing, unpacking, uh, changing directory into the uh, thing, start the configure command, tell it where to install it, and then make and make install. The one thing differently in the local scenario, if you just have installed cube, uh, you should put the bin directory of the cube installation directory into your path with a command shown um, so that when you run configure it picks up the already installed cube components and they don't get reinstalled uh, again by SCORP. The difference to uh, cube is it's a little bit more complicated and it's actually compiler and MPI dependent. So uh, if you use multiple uh, MPIs or, or multiple compilers for different applications, you have to install SCORP for every uh, compiler and MPI combination. For that, you have to specify on the configure line, in, in addition to the prefix, additional options. Um, if you use a compiler different than the GNU compilers, you would have to specify it with dash dash with no cross compiler suite and then the name of a compiler suite like IBM or Intel. Um, again, if you're using more than one N MPI library uh, or the configure has problems determining which MPI library you have, you would have to specify it with dash dash with MPI and again uh, uh, the name uh, of the MPI library. And if you have Puppy installed, uh, which I, I told you would be very helpful uh, to, to measure hardware count on the system additionally, uh, you would have to specify with these, uh, with Puppy header and with Puppy lib uh, configuration options where to find uh, the Puppy components. Scorpi can do actually uh, support many other things like uh, measuring CUDA uh, applications, OpenCL, ShMEM, OpenACC. Uh, in this uh, short introduction, uh, we don't have a time to go into details and I would like to point you to the installation guide of Scorpi uh, to uh, explain the additional uh, configure options you would have to use in the case uh, uh, if you want to use some of these systems. Now to our last uh, component, Skalaska. Uh, again, it's basically the same thing. You go to the Skalaska website as shown, look for the latest version, in, and currently it's Skalaska 2.5. Again, you would have to put the bin directory of Scorpi, which just installed into the path to make sure we can reuse some of its components like OTF and, and uh, the cube uh, 
things again. Then you unpack uh, it again, go in the directory, configure it, uh, tell it where to store it, and to make, make install. So you see it's always basically the same procedure. But again, like uh, with Scorp, uh, Scalaska is dependent on compiler and MPI. So again, you have to tell it uh, if you install it for multiple combinations, uh, uh, which uh, compiler and which MPI it use, but it uses exactly the same uh, compiler and configuration switches as Scorp. So there is uh, basically nothing else to learn. Okay, just to give you an idea how that looks like, I uh, did such an installation just uh, before I do that. I, I cannot do it showing it online because it takes uh, quite a while. It can be uh, easily 15 minutes or longer uh, and we don't have the time in this little uh, online module. So, but here you see yeah, I used uh, like here wget to download the latest Core P package. With a tar command I unpacked it and then I changed in the directory. Um, here I started the configure command uh, and because I'm using GCC and I have just one uh, MPI installed on my system, uh, uh, open MPI, I don't have to specify any additional uh, uh, parameters and then it goes on and, and checks for all the different things he needs to know about configuring your, your system. As you see it's quite extensive and it goes through all the different submodules and does all the configure. Uh, so now perhaps you uh, understand why it takes a little bit longer. But basically the important portion is at the end. So if you don't run in into errors at the end, it will show you like a summary of installation. So here it, it shows. And here you can add the summary at the end. You can check uh, basically ever it was configured as you uh, intended. So here it says, yeah, like I found the platform Linux. Um, uh, for OTF and Opari, uh, because we didn't install them separately, uses the internal components, but because Cube was installed before, it is reusing the, uh, the other packages, and then it basically gives more information on, on other things, what it supports, like here we see OpenZL support uh, was not uh, configured, also no CUDA support, and so on, and so you find all the information. Okay. Uh, here in the next window, I, I show you basically once after the configure was done, I did the make and again, it, it, it takes a while, it goes into it and compiles all the files, creates the necessary uh, programs and libraries. Uh, again, it takes a f uh, typically a few minutes uh, to go through and then uh, as long as you don't see any error, which you easily would be able to spot at the end, just says I'm, I'm done and then you do make install and it would uh, go on and go through uh, your, uh, your directories and install all the necessary files in the prefix that I uh, just uh, told you. Okay, so um, Okay, so as you could see, um, if you do that, and I said it takes quite some while, and you have to do it for uh, multiple compilers and MPI libraries, or uh, besides the Scalaska and Scorp tools, you also want to install further libraries and HPC tools like like the Paravia tool from Pop or the LAPAC library and so on. Um, it gets uh, quite tedious. And so if you want to make it easy to maintain and update your HPC software stack to make it easy to install new versions when they come available, uh, we suggest to use uh, a package manager. And for HPC, there are two special ones, one called EasyBuild from the University of Ghent in Belgium. And here's a an URL where you find it. There's another one called SPAC from Lawrence Livermore in US again and finally the open uh, the linux foundation has something called open hpc where they pre-compile uh, lots of tools and and, and mpi libraries and so on uh, in, uh, so this is a binary package manager and here you can actually even download uh, rpms like other uh, linux things and install them and so on the disadvantage of course here is you ha first have to uh, learn how to use EasyBuild or SPAC, how to install it and so on. Uh, but once uh, 
you learn that and it's not too complicated, then installing tools and, and, and other libraries is, is quite easy. I show you here like how it would be uh, when you do it for easy build. So once you have easy build installed, you would look for a suitable easy config. A easy config is a file which basically for every tool basically says, okay, uh, this version depends on this compiler, this uh, library, and has these subcomponents. And uh, so, in order to find uh, uh, an easy config for your system, you say ev s and the name of a tool, and it lists you where it files. You pick the one uh, which basically is close to the situation you want. Uh, ideally, perhaps it's already there. If not, uh, you can easily change it by change the version or uh, the, the compiler um, and MPI name. And then you just say eb of that file, and then it goes on, does all the downloading, configuring, installing, and so on for you. Spec is basically the same, but instead of specifying all these different compiler library and versions, uh, it provides a, a syntax to do that on the command line. You say spec install the tool, and then with the add sign, you can add which version you want to have, and the percent sign, you can specify the compiler, and with this little array, the MPI library. And if you leave off portions, it takes the default version, the default compiler, and so on. OpenHPC, um, uh, as I said, it provides uh, ready to use uh, RPMs to install. So you would go to the website, download the, the matching Skalaska uh, RPM, and then use the like Zipper or Yum uh, to install that RPM on your system. Okay, that's it. Uh, normally, as this is complicating, do it for the first time, you probably will run into some errors. So if you have uh, problems, um, you can contact the developers for Scopy that you can reach them with an email support at scopy-p.org. And for Scalaska and Cube, uh, they are reachable by Scalaska at uh, fzulik.de. If you make uh, a question, especially you have errors, please make sure that in your email you say, okay, I use these commands. Uh, this is the error I'm getting and giving them some information, not just writing, hey, uh, help me, I have an error. Uh, and it get, goes much quicker. Uh, for uh, the HPC package managers, uh, they also uh, provide uh, mailing lists where you can get support and they are listed here. So uh, that's it. So I hope uh, I gave you enough information that you are able to uh, install the tools now. Uh, as I said, if, if you have problems, uh, please contact the tool developers to get further help. And so thank you for listening and uh, Goodbye.